We're right here at the 2014 Mr. Olympia pre-judging just wrapped up. We were waiting for this day for a whole year. I got four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler standing right next to me. I got two-time, three-time three time, three time run-up, Flex Wheeler. Flex, I'm going to throw this at you right now. Is that what you, was, is that what you expected? No, no, it's not. Um, I, 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 thought, um, I thought Phil would be a little bit sharper. Um, he, he normally nails it. There's still, you know, uh, the tomorrow show. Um, Kai, pretty much what I expected from him, uh, dead on. He was a little bit thicker. Uh, actually, it was interesting when he was doing his crap pose. He wasn't really contracting his, uh, his pecs. But uh, to my surprise, uh, Sean Roden, I mean, wow, man. That was very interesting uh, what he did up there. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Jay, sitting down there watching these guys going at it. As a four-time Mr. Olympia, you know exactly what it feels like. Phil is a personal and good friend of yours. How did you see it? Uh, I, I, I give Phil the win for sure. Uh, of course, Roden the surprise. I think he's knocking at the door, honestly. Um, I would have it that way. Obviously, they switched Dennis up a little bit in there, and of course, Kai Green. But I think Kai Green was a little flat. I mean, I don't think, uh, I think the little hype that he had going into the show, I think it was immediate, apparently, when he came out that he uh, wasn't at his best. So I would have it at that. I saw, well, I, when Phil came out, Phil looked great. The only thing that I saw at Phil was that he somehow lost it, you know, to contract his midsection, something that I haven't seen in the past. And, and it looked like maybe he's trying to get too big, you know, which is not basically suiting him because standing next to Sean Roden, who exposed it even more. Sean Roden, for me, was a surprise today because he did add a size. You could see it. He still had the lines. And to me, Sean Roden was probably, I would say, the most impressive guy tonight. You know, his lines are very good, and he had great conditioning. I would say, you know, he had the combination. I mean, as much as, you know, Phil has a lot of dense muscles, of course, when he flexes. I think Phil was honestly a little flat. So I think, you know, if yeah. he pops, gets some yeah, more yeah, pop yeah. to his yeah. muscle. What's happened from, he normally does that, like, on tomorrow. He'll come out a lot fuller. Yeah, that's what threw me off also. And, Sorry. you know, you, you know it's, uh, it's, it's apparent. I mean, Sean really stood out. I mean, I saw when they came up for the individuals, he stood out. Um, some of the other guys, the expectations, I think – I don't know, from, from my understanding, I mean, from what I'm kind of evaluating, kind of everyone's not really on point yeah. is yeah. really what it comes down to. Not at their best. I mean, no one's at their absolute best at this show, yeah. except maybe, I mean, Sean, I mean, I, I can't really judge from the other shows because it's obviously a different different crew he's standing next to, but right. Sean Roden is definitely the most improved in this lineup from year from last year. You know, I mean, considering that he just had a broken leg, what, five months ago, that's yeah. shocking. I was actually, toe, toe, I was toe. broken toe. toe. I was a broken toe. I was actually looking to see if he was going to have a, one of his legs was going to be weaker no, 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 because no. of that, but it, was, it wasn't anything like that, so it was interesting. Broken to me, toe. the guy who impressed me the most when talking about condition was Branch. Branch came back because he had a few not so good showings. Last year, he, he, he was almost out of the top 10. And in Dallas, he won Dallas show, but he wasn't even close to the best branch. And I think he came out and impressed me the most by, you know, just because of his condition, his graininess. I mean, he is. And I thought, you know, they called him and Wolf, and they were kind of battling back and forth. And that was for, like, fifth and sixth, I believe. So, I, you know, it's, it's, I think he got kind of pushed out. Obviously, the last call was Wolf in there. So, I, I don't know. I mean, branch is right there, like, you know, fifth, sixth somewhere in there and of course big Rami's pushing that top spot too they sl try to slide in there and he i mean when he came out and from the front man it was just like everyone's just like wow where this guy like where does this guy come from but you know turning around to the backside just didn't have the detail in the glutes and hamstrings and that set him back from really cracking that top six i think absolutely i agree with you and uh i still say that give this man a couple more years because, like I told, uh, I don't know, I think I told you today, this guy went from zero to 1,000 and didn't even have time to, uh, to get enough uh, experience. You know, all of a sudden he's dealing with the best people in the world. And it's crazy because he, this is the only guy you can actually get on, look on stage and say, well, he can lose some muscle yeah. and still be bigger yeah. than everyone yeah. else. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Let's talk about somebody else who uh, kind of impressed and, and, and came out of nowhere and might land in the top six, Victor Martinez. Yeah, Victor, uh, I, I'm, you know what, I'm not shocked because on the tail end of the uh, last shows, like in Madrid and everything, Victor was on fire. So I'm not shocked that he was on fire again today. What do you think about Very him? impressive. I mean, he, uh, he knocked in there. I mean, what's, I mean, I thought he was going to be fourth for a minute. Yeah. I don't know. He, I, I don't know what, you know, that last call with Wolf, I don't know if that knocked him down. So you're looking at him probably, you know, fifth, Dexter in there. So really, I mean, the fight, the fight is going to be, 
like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I think kind of, you know, we kind of know who the top three are going to be. I mean, I, I like I said, I, I pick Roden to be the guy next to Phil, but uh, it looks like it's going to be Kai Green possibly. I mean, I think personally we have a serious battle going on tomorrow from four to seven. Yeah. I mean, nothing is in yeah. stone. First, I thought Dennis Wolf was out of the top four, and I thought Dexter had fourth spot. Now, I think with the last call out, we see Dexter, and right now Dennis is in fourth. But now let's talk about some of the guys that probably not in there that, you know, a lot of people expected a lot from, like, let's say, Roly Winkler. You know who I thought really was overlooked was William Bonnick. Yeah. Bonnick got yeah. overlooked, I think. I think he should have been in a higher cause. I think he was one of the last guys called. I think his problem is that he's paying his dues right now with his first Olympia. It's the first Olympia. It's easier to get overlooked, you know, it yourself. But Winkler, I mean, he was just off from, I believe, yeah. last year he was seventh. I mean... He was, you know, he could have placed above me last year. He, I think his condition was definitely, he was too big. I mean, you could just yeah. see it. He obviously made a mistake trying to come in as big as possible, and that cost him, and he might not even make top 10 because I don't see him yeah. in the top 10. No, I, I really don't either. It's kind of disappointing, especially as well as he's done uh, last year to come in and make that mistake. But, yeah. again, it's a bodybuilding show, and you still have tomorrow. So I'm looking for Phil to probably fill out like he normally does on Saturday and probably shock the crowd. But, you know, along like what, uh, what uh, Jay said, I was just, shocked that normally he comes out with that that's just freaky fullness and it just throws everything so I think it was actually by by Phil making that mistake he actually made the gap a little bit closer for it to be a fight so it's going to be interesting when he came out I mean it was clear he was the clear yeah. I mean top out. condition guy you could just see it um, yes you know as he started transition I don't know if he got better I, it's hard to really say because other guys got better so yeah so it's really I think I think Phil came out great, and I think he lost it a little bit. Just like you said, I think he flattened out a little bit. Maybe he just lost the pump that he came out with. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, think I think tomorrow it will be. Tomorrow. I think it'll be a whole different story. It will be a total different yeah. ball game. Let's talk about a few guys we haven't even mentioned yet that I think look great. Steve Kuklo. He was in great condition. You know, I think with Steve, it's just. Um, you know, he doesn't have, like, when he poses, it's it's just really tight and hard. He just needs more, like, wow, you know, more pop to the muscle. But, you know, as far as condition, condition. he was one of the most conditioned guys up there, I believe. You know? Yeah, I think so, too. I think, for, especially from the back. Yeah, His definitely. hamstrings and glutes were shredded. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen him in that type of condition at all. I was very pleased to see that somebody has so much potential actually bring it as far as condition. When he turned around, I mean, just feathers stride and everything in the glutes. I've never seen that in him in any of the shows that he's won. So, I think no matter what place he, get, he should be very proud of his condition and what he brought to his first Olympia. I said in my assessment, I said, if he fills out and gets that little pop he's going on his the, chest, he's got the frame. yes, and he, when he turns around, his back is getting a little thicker, he has to frame, he has to look, he has the symmetry, and he has to condition. And I think Juan Morel right there, I mean, he's another one. I mean, great condition. Uh, these guys battled at the USA, yes. if you remember. I mean, it was kind of one of those things, like, this is the future, guys. Well, here they are in the Olympia stage. I think those guys are going to be, like, kind of in a tight battle right there as f who's going to place above who. And talking about Juan Morel, I mean, this guy's been competing since April. He did the Brazil, he did the New York Pro, he did the Tampa Pro, and he's here, and still, he nailed his nailed condition. I don't, I don't think it's impossible to be able to do that. And I, I know a lot of guys, and I think more so it's your body type, if you can actually nail it repetitively or not. Some guys can, some can't. So I don't think it's, I, I think you actually should get better as you go on in a show, because you're learning more about your physique. Absolutely. Well, anything you want to add to this? I guess sure. we covered it all. I mean, 50th anniversary, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you had a lot of great guys up there, and. The crowd, I mean, the crowd was packed. I yeah. mean, for re-judging, I turned around. I mean, there was a lot of people in the crowd. It's and an uh, awesome crowd, yeah. You know, we'll see. 24 hours uh, later, we'll see what uh, see what the uh, outcome is going to be. I think we're going to see some great condition guys tomorrow, much fuller, yeah. much more relaxed because, you know, the worst part is over there. They just about know where they are. But like I said, the fight will be from 4, 5 to 7 or 8. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting. I think we're going to see some guys come out and look completely different, a lot better than what we've seen tonight. So let's give these guys some rest and see what they look like tomorrow. We're going to wrap this up right here with four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler, three-time runner-up, Flex Wheeler. I'm Dennis James for FlexOnline.com.